Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey at the JX Fight Club in Shanghai, China, and I've decided I'm going to take you on a tour of my gym today. So here's the front door. Just walked in. Now let's take a look around. So we have the um, lobby front desk right here where you check in. It's early in the morning. Gym's actually closed right now. Um, they have dart tournaments here. I'm not big on darts myself, but it's super popular here in China, so there's a, a dart league that meets here from time to time. They have fun. Some seating right here in the lobby. A uh, little pro shop. Yeah, right there. Some boxing gloves and mouth guards and wrist wraps and shin guards and t-shirts and whatnot for sale. And... The entrance to the the, uh, the mat. Oh, we got some cage panels up here. I, I would prefer to have a door right there that's closable because that, that would make this a whole lot more usable. But one thing at a time. Um, we just put in some some new mats here. We got this uh, this nice blue seamless mat. It's fantastic. Yep, mirror on one side, right over there. Ooh, there I am. Um, Crash mat right here for what else? Cool ninja flips, of course. Okay, um, this, I love this, uh, wall mats like you'd see in any wrestling room in, in the US. When I first got here to China, I, I got a job offer at a gym, and they said, hey, we, we want an MMA coach. Um, what equipment do you need? And I said, uh, wrestling mat on the floor and some wall mats on the walls. And they laughed at me. They said, what? Mats on the walls? Are you kidding me? I said, no, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's, it's important, right? Because uh, <sighs> fighting happens up against a wall in an MMA fight, or a cage in this case, man, this is so important. Everything about MMA, everything about striking, grappling, clinching, pummeling, etc., takedowns, guard work, ground, the ground game, everything is different with your back up against the, the cage. It's just as different as the stand-up fight is from the ground game, you know, with your back on the floor. It's just another dimension. So, um... Yeah, this this is a great new addition to the gym. Love that. Use it a lot. You know, you can do some wall walking, kickovers, things like that. Let's see here. Uh. Practice your little get ups off the, off the wall. Reversals, fun stuff like that. And onto this area. Uh, this hasn't changed too much from the last time I showed you the gym. Um, this wall where the mirror is, they, uh, we did knock that down. Uh, there's a swimming pool behind this uh, on the first floor. This is, um, the building is actually called the, the Shuhui Gymnasium and Swimming Club because it's a huge Olympic-sized swimming pool back there on the, on the main floor. So, um, there was some uh, structural damage to the roof that they spent the better part of, of last year fixing. So they had to knock this wall down, close the gym for several months, we moved upstairs, that's why I shot all my videos in a kind of different looking conference room instead of in the gym. And they rebuilt the wall. We expanded the gym by a whole 11 centimeters. Yeah, I know, lots and lots of wiggle room there. But, you know, put the mats down, checkered pattern now. And same old heavy bags. Um, uppercut bag, love this thing. <clears throat> Super useful. Get one of those, practice on it. You know, the bowling pin, the pin bag. Great to practice your, uh, your head kicks on. It's kind of got a neck there. A speed bag. All right. Um, what else? Got that thing. Lots of double-end bags. 
love the Dublin bag. It's uh, fantastic. Um, and you may be wondering, why, why do we have ballet bars here in this gym? Well, first of all, I, I didn't buy them. But um, I, I do have a dance background. I used to dance professionally in ballet, but I didn't buy them. Um, the Taekwondo instructor bought them. See, the big money maker at this gym, like a lot of gyms, is kids classes. And in this gym, they make most of their money off of um, kids Taekwondo classes. That's, that's how we pay the rent here. That's how we keep the lights on. And what did the kids do on these things? They stretch. Okay. What else? We got the boxing ring up here. Nice big boxing ring. Same as before. All right. So it's very important, especially if you're if you're training to fight in China, to become adept at fighting both in the ring and in the cage, because it's a very different dynamic. And a lot of the pro fight shows, um, MMA are in a boxing ring here. A lot of them are also in the cage, so you never know when you get invited to compete if it's going to be a ring or a cage, so you really have to be prepared for both. It's, um, you don't get a whole lot of information about fights sometimes. Oh, here are my uh, gymnastic spotters here. Um, let's uh, give you a quick demo there. You can do that and some other things. Let's see here. This is a fun one. This one is to practice, um, what do you call them, uh, back handsprings. Okay. Give you a little bit better view. Yeah, let's give that a try. Uh, need more power in that jump. Lowest back handspring ever. Oh, I did a bunch of heavy squats today. Legs are a little tired. We'll come back, revisit that later. So, moving back. What else? Got a stack of tires there for hand conditioning and all that good stuff. What else? Um, I hung up some gymnastics rings here, you know, so you can do uh, pull ups and, uh, and various other gymnastics movements, dips, muscle ups, that kind of thing. I got another set right here. If you have space, somewhere to hang these up, I'd strongly recommend it because there's, there's so much cool stuff you can do. I mean, I love gymnastics movement. Um, you know, I'm not yet an expert at it. Here, I'm taking you back behind the boxing ring to the weight area, but uh, what I've done so far has helped so so much with overall athleticism. So here's the weight area. Now we just recently built an Olympic lifting platform, which is awesome because now, now we can work uh, Olympic lifts. And this is, this is a handmade do-it-yourself one. This uh, top, this runner, I love it. It's, uh, it's bamboo. Um, bamboo is mass produced here in China and it's super strong and um, I'm not gonna say it's cheap, but it, it's much more affordable than a lot of uh, a lot of the hardwoods out there. I wanted something nice. Um, runner out there, it's a uh, you know it's fantastic surface to to do your uh, your uh, Olympic lifts on, or or deadlifts or whatever you want to do with this platform. So if you're not familiar with an Olympic platform, what it is, it's um, it's this really wide base. the The base is is made of plywood, right? I'm trying to give you a big shot of that and you see um, and on top of this plywood base that's uh, two layers thick it's got these big thick rubber mats they're four centimeters each and then uh, four centimeters of, uh, of bamboo and plywood uh, screwed together here for the um, the runner in the middle where you stand right so what this does when you drop a weight it's going to distribute the force of the weight throughout the entire surface area of the floor instead of just in one spot, which would cause, cause damage to the floor. Also, the rubber mats will cause the bumper plates, you know, these ones, the rubber-footed colored plates, and uh, those ones over there got two sets. That's 
nice to have, um, to bounce rather than smash into the floor or break, so it helps you to avoid property damage, which up here on the second floor is super important. See, before we built this platform, the folks downstairs would complain if, if ever a weight fell on the floor because, you know, the light fixtures would start coming loose. We don't have that problem anymore, so um, strongly recommend uh, if you want to get into any kind of lifting where, you know, weights fall on the floor, especially the Olympic lifts, or if you want to do some heavy deadlifts where that weight comes crashing down a little bit, or you want to do some deep squats where there's, there's a risk of uh, failure where you have to drop that weight off your back, you know, build one of these. So, yeah, what else? Um, got my bars here, specialty bars, the Swiss bar or the football bar, whatever you want to call that. Um, gives you a neutral grip for a lot of the... Uh, um, the exercises that you would normally do with a barbell, so instead of this grip, it's this one. So you notice it changes the position of the shoulder and gives you basically a more ergonomically correct way to lift. So if you have shoulder problems, like if you're doing the bench press and your shoulders just start hurting, you know, the, that football bar, the Swiss bar, is, is a great option to go for or overhead presses or you know, even curls or what, whatever it is that, that might be aggravating the shoulders. It's, it's a good option to have. What else? Um, the trap bar for deadlifts and, and a few other exercises. You stand inside of it, lift it up. What else? Um, got my holly bars over here. Love that black one. Um, nice smooth finish. Um, 20 kilos. And then the, uh, the ladies bar right there, 17 and a half kilos. Um, got my squat rack right here. Pride and joy. I spend time on this thing every day, working on a uh, squat every day program. Right now, I've been doing that for about six months so far. So um, if you're not familiar with that, if you're thinking you shouldn't squat every day, um, maybe you shouldn't, but look up the Bulgarian squat method. It's um, something I'm trying out right now, and I'm, and I'm liking the results. What else? We've got kettlebells all the way down here. Lots and lots and lots and lots of kettlebells. we got some giant... 50 kilo monsters here that we use for farmer walks and swings and um, one of my one of my goals is to clean and press and snatch these overhead one day one day um, got some dumbbells here you know, standard gym equipment uh, 2.5 kilos all the way up to 25 kilos in two and a half kilo increments and the jerk boxes. If you don't know what those are, you can use these for, um, you know, assistance on. Uh, I've got another set over here. Assistance on a bunch of different lifts, like the uh, the jerk section of the clean and jerk. If you just want to work that, you can set the weight up on the jerk box, and you know, jump it up overhead, drop it on the jerk box. It'll you know, it'll absorb the weight um, of the uh, the weights. It'll absorb the impact, right? Um, you, know, you can modify the height of deadlifts and various other exercises. Awesome stuff. Look them up, jerk boxes. You can also build your own. I, I bought these because it's, it's pretty affordable to buy this, this stuff uh, here in China. What else? Um, dip bars. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy with this video. Um, and, of course, on the squat rack, we've got uh, pull-up handles. You can also use it for chin-ups. And... Then we've got this, um, what do you call it? Big old tire and uh, Concept2 rowing machine that nobody ever uses. So the equipment I have back here is, is pretty minimal, I would say. Um, it's not fancy cable machines that you see in a lot of gyms. And I'm not super interested in the fancy cable machines. Um, when I first went to a gym, I think it was 21 years old, I signed up for a Gold's Gym, fantastic facility. They had everything, like literally everything, it was like this massive sprawling gym with every machine and weight lifting device imaginable and I had no clue what to do because, you know, I was just starting out and so I wandered around and did the machines and um, worked out until I got tired and I went home and I did that for two years and I didn't get any 
stronger. I didn't get any more athletic. Um, I didn't notice any changes. I didn't look any different. And I, I was confused. I felt a little bit cheated. And I read this fantastic book, and I mentioned it before in one of my videos, called The New Rules of Lifting by Lou Schuster. The New Rules of Lifting. Go check that out. And it basically cuts all the garbage out of strength training and, and streamlines it to what is going to give you the most bang for your buck. And that's, that's how I've outfitted my, my strength training area back here. You know, barbells, plates, bumper plates, Olympic lifting floor, you know, dumbbells, pull-ups, dips. Uh, oh yeah, we, we have a bench here for, uh, what's that bench for? For when you get, for when you get tired of doing uh, real lifts and then you need a break. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, all you power lifters who love, uh, love the bench press. I, I'll, I'll do the bench press about once a week. I'm not, uh, not, not huge into the bench press, but, um, but we do have the bench. We do have the bench. Um, but yeah, the new rules of lifting streamline your, your strength training. I, I have a friend, I've mentioned him before also, a guy named Dave Williams, big Dave Williams. He was a massively strong guy, just massively strong, super, super strong. I'm, I'm going to put this down. So, uh, um, so you guys don't get too dizzy following me around all over the place like that, shaky cam style. Um, and I've honestly never met a human being stronger than Dave. Well, I, I probably have, but, you know, never really trained with a human being as strong as Dave. And, and, uh, and he told me something interesting about, about his weightlifting program. He said when he was younger, he used to do like, like 12 different exercises just for his biceps. You know, because he'd, he'd read all these bodybuilding magazines, and, and that's, that's what they told you to do. I thought, oh, do a dozen different exercises for the biceps, and do a dozen different, different exercises for the triceps, and, and 20 different things for your shoulders, and, and whatnot. And he said, no, um, I don't. I do one exercise for my arms, I, and independently, because, you know, they are doing a great deal of work holding on to that bar for everything else I do. So they're exercised enough in that sense. And his, his weightlifting routine was very simple, just the basic lifts, periodized on a six-day schedule, I think. So six days on, one day off, six days on, one day off. Um, super, super simple exercises almost everybody knows. You know, squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, curls once in a while. Um, simple things, simple things. And that's, that's what the new rule of lifting is about. He'd, he'd never read that book, but you know, everything he was espousing was the philosophy of, of the new rules of lifting. So yeah, definitely go check that out. Um, what else? We've got some changing rooms back here. 